Hey, today I wanted to do another indie overview. Now, I can't really call this a Switch port review series video because I never played the original, but this is originally a PC game. Uh, what they did is when they ported it to Switch, you know, because the Switch is so lucrative for indie developers to actually make money now that Steam is so full of garbage, <laughs> they added a bunch of new stuff to it, and I think that new content actually just hit the uh, Steam version earlier this week. And now, the Switch version, uh, it had some performance issues, and it also crashed quite a bit. I don't think I ever had the game crash on me, but a lot of other people were complaining about it, so it took them a while to fix it. Uh, it took some time for the patch to go through certification and stuff, but it actually just dropped yesterday. So I figured uh, now is a good time to show the game instead of show it while it's, uh, you know, it's kind of broken. So it is a roguelike shmup. There's a variety of modes, and when you start out, all you can select is this. But you can fight any boss that you've uh, defeated before. You can see I've fought most of them, only missing a few. And in terms of like persistent elements, this game is kind of weird. Like the the whole uh, item pool is unlocked at the start. However, when you pick up an item for the first time it gets added to your uh, inventory here and you can use it during the arena fights. So you can actually practice with the weapons and different weapon combinations on different bosses which is pretty cool. So even though all this stuff is unlocked in the game just by default, you can't use it in the arena until you've uh, picked it up at least once. So I'm still very much in the discovery phase. You can see I'm missing uh, a couple melee weapons, a bunch of heavies, three energy weapons, and so on. So there's a boss rush. But I don't think the uh, internet features are working right now. I think the patch screwed something up. I, I wasn't able to get to a daily run earlier. Yeah, the daily run's still screwed up, but uh, it's pretty standard fare. You know, you go do the same run as everyone else and you get ranked depending on what your score is. So one of the persistent elements that they apparently added, like I said I did not play the original game, is they added these extra ships. In the original version this was the only one that there was. And now they have these more specialized uh, builds. Like This is just the default one. This one is slower, it has more uh, more HP but it does less damage and then this one is fast and teleports around and stuff and this one is centered on bots and this one is like a jack-of-all-trades bot or ship but I think you have to beat the uh, final boss without taking damage or something I'm not anywhere near good enough at the game to do that yet so I'm gonna play as this one there are also seated runs so if you want to practice with builds and stuff you can do that as well I'm probably not going to get very far since this is one of the harder ships to use, but I can't finish. I haven't finished a run on this yet anyway, so <laughs> that's kind of irrelevant. So you have a pretty small hitbox, like most uh, Don Mako games. I believe it's only the cockpit that can actually uh, receive damage. None of these are too great with this build. I'll go ahead and get this in case something better drops.
this ship has a teleport and you can stack up to three of them on cooldown. And it's also explosive, so you can use it to do damage if you want to play like a close combat kind of build. Some of the bullet patterns are actually pretty cool. In terms of the performance, from what I saw, uh, I pretty much exclusively played this game in in uh, portable mode like while I was out and stuff. The performance seems to be uh, mostly an issue in that mode, but I played a little bit in portable mode uh, just before I started doing my recording session for this week, and it seemed to be running a lot better after the patch. I kind of wish this game had more persistent elements. It would be nice if it had like permanent upgrades or something that you could turn off. I think uh, 20XX did that in a good way. You know, if you wanted to just not lose all the time or just have more fun with builds, they had the permanent upgrades that you could also turn off. I think I'm going to suggest that to them. It'll make it a little bit easier for people to see all the weapons and stuff. so far even though the drops have not been the best. Oh man, that's a tough decision. Chain reaction is really good since it kind of makes a lot of the trash mobs just die instantly, but I want to go ahead and go with this to show some of the more unique stuff. This build's not the best anyway, so <laughs> might as well take the, the more interesting option. 
So this makes the teleport uh, do damage on both sides. Awesome. <laughs> so even though this run's gonna die because I'm only I only have one more uh, HP left, I unlock this boomerang so I can mess around with it in uh, in the arena mode. That was not a bad run considering I haven't played for a while. But yeah, they're stared in binary stars. This game has been on. PC for several years, but they just put it on Switch, I believe, a month ago. I think it cost me $12. I had a bunch of uh, the gold points from just buying a bunch of games, so I think it cost me like 8 or something. I definitely got 8 bucks out, out of it. I got pretty close to the end on one run, but fortunately, due to still being in the discovery phase, they didn't, <laughs> didn't entirely make it, but I'll definitely uh, probably do some daily runs of this later on and people would be interested in that so I think people liked my uh, dailies I did on 20xx and stuff so if you're interested in that or uh, daily runs on roguelikes coming back in general especially during this dry period go ahead and let me know anyway that's it I'll catch you guys later peace